putting a lot of poetry in the imagery of like black and white is cookie cream, ice cream, coffee, Oreo, uh, all types of foods that you think are black and white, kind of layered, double fudge, Oreo. And so this poem was inspired out of this idea of frustration that I have when we talk about Black History Month. Because there's no such thing as black history. There's no such thing as white history. There's only American history. People just don't like to talk about it. And just, you know, people get uncomfortable because we have to talk about our swirled history and we have to talk about the messy, muddy mix that it is. So this one, um, the title of this one is called Milk. And it's a sort of play on words, because every time I look at MLK in all caps, if you look at it quick enough, it looks like milk. So, <laughs> M, lowercase I-L-K. American white history is homogenized. Non-fat skim collagen colonized. Oreo cookies washed down with a glass of milk. Mouth swallowing wide. White stomach, lactose intolerant diet. To dairy, diary of soldiers, battles, a bottling of lies. Foot soldiers, just a footnote in the margins. Margarine and buttermilk marginalized. Black history is extracted. Vanilla facts redacted. Retracted, reenacted, and revised. Rewritten words, Kurds coagulated coexisting cultures, from the past, blacks are pasteurized, separated, segregated. History is half and half. Offering coffee, educated. Whites pouring cream and two sugars. Blacks say, I'll take mine black. Sweet and low, swing low Negro spirituals in little pink packs. Think back. Tea party, people pouring tea in the harbor into tea pouring sugar and milk. Crates, sugar cubes floating in the water, slaves standing on crates, auction, a nation is built. Blood curdling curds, his stories, our stories, blurring while stirring, black history, white history, simultaneously occurring. Spoon tapping the cup, ramming rod into cannon, sugar granulated grains of sand on the shores where they're landing. Metal spoon, silver metal, bronze, gold, and sterling, silver spoon, civil war, Poor blood mixing and swirling. Revolution, convolution, birth of a nation. American historian like Englishmen, slurping over interpretation. Wigs and Tories, oratorios, blacks and whites dripping Oreos, crumbs floating in the milk. But white men say history is only how his story goes. Revisionist, vision is murky, muddy, milky, malty, and cloudy. Clarity thick as Nestle quick. Canister and cannon keg, both powder. Musket fire, priming pan, loading the spoon, the muzzle is hot. Beans and bullets, both are spilling, coffee and barrel, a double shot. White man loading the muzzle, muzzling history that does not sound like him. Immature like a child blowing bubbles in his milk, skimming over black man's history. To him, black man's skin is only skin. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, um, it is now my um, pleasure to introduce Richard Hero and Cordell Emery to, to, to come talk about the core values of abundant life. So the uh, core values of abundant life, this is um, our guiding principles and uh, help determine and shape what we do um, out of abundant life. So um, there's eight of them. I'm going to read through four of them, and then uh, Cardell is going to take the last four. There are no particular order. Uh, so the first one is in a holistic approach. Uh, Jesus didn't come to earth just to save our souls. The gospel gives detailed accounts of Jesus. Demonstrating care for the physical and mental well-being of individuals, 
the systems that they live in, their posture towards each other, and their relationship with God. It is abundant life's desire to relationally support individuals and families in all facets of life, whether it be education, finances, health, employment, or faith. The next one is listen to the community. Abundant Life is not a ministry for the prospect community. Abundant Life is a ministry with the prospect community. Abundant Life is not Abundant Life without the community, and we are at our best the more we listen to and grow together. Redistribution. The scriptures are constant and clear that, that God is deeply concerned for the disadvantaged, whether it be the poor, foreigners, orphans, or widows. God expects his people to care for those in their, their midst. That is why there are many requirements and examples for God's people to give generously to each other. Just as God has been abundantly generous to us. So when you tithe to your church's ministry, uh, mercy ministry or volunteer your time and resources with Abundant Life, you are engaging in the biblical practice of redistribution. Empower. We believe everyone is created in the image of God with unique gifts and talents. Our programs and activities are designed to tap into individuals Existing skills and unknown assets to enhance and increase the opportunity to grow in these gifts and talents. This makes our families and our community strong and vibrant as we share in an abundant life. The next one is relocation, which consists of three different kinds of people. The first person is the one who is not born in their inner city but moved later to the city. Or neighborhood. That person is normally, or well, usually, a group leader or trying to bring cost to the area. The second person is the returner who was born and raised to the community or left to find a better life, such as going off for college or military, and later return because they realize that they're no longer trapped by that negativity. The third is the person who, was, who never left the community, who was born and raised, but decided to never leave, but they are aware of that the problem that they need to change. Reconciliation is the heart of the gospel. gospel. The meaning is to reconnect the people to God, to have a true relationship, and not just saying, I believe or I go to church. One goal is to break down racial, economic, and ethnic barriers within churches and within <coughs> groups that you have for the benefit of the community. Leadership development has a goal of Restoring the glue that fills the vacuum of the morals, spiritual, and economic leadership to so the community with the greatest disadvantage is most prevalent in developing leaders, which is done best, best done with the youth because they are more open-minded than the older generations. Which brings me to my next uh, church base, which states the community of God's people which is uniquely capable of affirming the dignity of the poor and enabling them to meet their own needs. The problem we face in churches today is not as being involved in the community as they used to be. The, only, the main way to reconnect people with God is actually going out to those people to bring them to your church or cause to bring them to God. 